Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today, I want to continue our discussion on, or at least revisit our discussion on wiring these uh, circuitron uh, tortoises. I uh, showed how to do this in a previous video on pre-wiring your tortoises. And it's one of the subjects that I covered in the March 2020 uh, DCC corner column in Model Railroader magazine. I've already showed you how to uh, solder to these small traces on the uh, tortoise. But before we go on, I'd like to uh, show you a couple of other options. So hang on for a second and we'll get started. Okay, so as I've said, the tortoises are, are very, very popular, and pre-wiring these tortoises makes it a lot easier to install them in the first place, and if need be, to swap uh, a, a bad one um, should the need arise. However, there are some other options available that make it even easier. Um, one of the, them are these uh, card edge connectors. They're just a green plastic um, device here with uh, a series of of contacts inside and some solder points on the outside. And the great thing is you can solder your wires to these and then just plug it in um, to the card on the circuit board, to the circuit board itself. And that makes it so easy. If you ever need to swap one of these out, you can just disconnect it and you're done. Now, these card edge connectors also come in a different version that uh, have screw terminals on them. And I can show you on the Smail, which is a different type of, uh, of tortoise switch machine, if you will. It's made by Circuitron, but it has a DCC coder, uh, accessory decoder built right in. But this particular version comes with a, uh, a set of contact terminals uh, soldered to the uh, circuit board itself. So these are screw terminals. You just stick your wires in there, screw them down, and you're done. No soldering required at all. And as I said, um, there is another version of this terminal here that you can buy that also has the uh, screw terminals. And I, I remember Ben Lake uh, showed how to use those uh, for the Canadian Canyons uh, Model Railroader Project Railroad uh, back, uh, I think it was in 2019. And there was an accompanying article in Model Railroader that showed how to do that, I believe. But I'll try to look up uh, somewhere and find this version and uh, the screw terminal version and add that to the description if I can locate those. Um, okay, so that takes care of the tortoise, which I talked about in the article. So let's go ahead and move on to the next subject, and that is um, these uh, plug-and-play type decoders. Uh, this one is from, uh, is from uh, Soundtracks. It's, it's an eco plug-and-play. And uh, so it's a, a nice little decoder, swaps out quite easily uh, in Atlas locomotives, Atherin, a lot of different locomotives that have this type of circuit board arrangement uh, on top of the motor. So let me go ahead and I'll show you a, 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 an example of how I solder and make connections to these little circuit boards here. But first, I mentioned previously that on occasions, I have tried to use these little, um, let me go ahead and zoom in. And with this uh, type of decoder, it has these uh, tabs here that stick out and are also located here on the side for the motor. And these are for your main pickups and your, um, and your uh, headlights. Whereas these are for things like different functions in your speaker connections here. Now these stick out far enough so that if you, have saved a lot of these little black connectors like I do. These come off of the uh, circuit boards that come in locomotives. And um, I've got quite a number of them because what I have found is generally they don't fit on these uh, decoder circuit boards. You can see here this one goes on, but it is so loose that I found that these things fall off quite easily. Uh, this one here, a different kind, uh, it goes just barely fits on there. I can't get it to go on. So it seems like they are either up, oh, there it is, it's stuck right on the end, but that's about it. 
generally then they don't seem to fit on these um, boards for making the electrical connections. Consequently, what I like to do is go ahead and just solder my wires to these. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that you can either go in from the top and insert your wire from the top and solder that way, or you can come in from the bottom and bring it back over and do your soldering. Um, that works fine, except that once you've installed the decoder in uh, a locomotive like this uh, Atlas Jeep 7, it becomes difficult to be able to try to get the wires up underneath and through these and do the soldering. Consequently, what I prefer to do is solder just directly to the pads themselves. So let me go ahead and show you how that works. Okay, I've zoomed in here, and what I've gone ahead and done is I've taken the lead from the truck here, and I've gone ahead and cut off the little metal clip that's on the end of these things normally, and I've stripped back a little bit of wire. So what I want to do first is go ahead and we will uh, tin the end of the wire here, like so. And let's get the tin on here as well. Okay, so now we have the uh, whole, we have the wire tinned and we have the uh, circuit board tab tinned. So I just go ahead and at this point, touch it and it's soldered. So it's, it's fairly straightforward there, easy. It's a good solid contact. And there isn't that much swivel motion of the wire for it to break loose here. So for me, this has been more than adequate. I've been doing this type of soldering installation for, oh, 30 years now, and um, I can't remember ever having to re repair one of these. So I think it works fairly well. And you would just continue that with all of these. And, you know, it's pretty straightforward all around here uh, to make your connections for your motor. And, you know, like I said, your speaker, extra functions you might want to install your two uh, lights here and the other uh, pickup from the other side of the truck. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and do one more. Uh, just clip it off here and strip a little bit of insulation off of the wire. And then we'll tin the wire here. Okay, and we'll tin the pad. And the great thing about these circuit traces here is it takes very, very little solder and very, very little heat to get a good, uh, to get a good solder joint. Okay, let's do this one real quickly. So that's all there is to that. Okay, um, the next thing I want to take a look at is uh, the sugar cube speakers. Now you'll notice on each sugar cube speaker we have these little spring-like contacts here, and those are what you have to solder to. So it can be somewhat difficult. Okay, these little speakers have very strong magnets in them. So when you bring down a soldering iron tip to do some work on them, very often what will happen is they will jump up and attach to the soldering iron instead of allowing you to solder. So what do I do about that? Well, this is uh, scotch double-sided tape. So I just take a piece of that tape and stick it like that to a scrap piece of, of wood here and then place the sugar cube speaker on it. And that way, you know, I don't care what you do, it's not gonna jump up there, okay? So that's safe. And I typically wear a, either a pair of Optivisors or a uh, set of magnifying uh, glasses with them. But at any rate, all you have to do though is come in here, place your solder right next to it, 
and put a small amount of solder on that end of that contact. Like that. Pretty easy to do if you have a steady hand. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, tin the ends of this wire here that I'm going to use. Like so. And let me get the second piece because it takes two wires for these. Get that out of the way. Okay, now I'm going to turn this around where I can get to it since I'm right handed. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do this side over here, just holding this pretend wire to the pretend metal contact here. And that one's done. And that one's done. Okay, so now you can see we've got both wires firmly attached to the little speaker and it's ready to be installed in a locomotive now. So, you know, as long as you've got a steady hand and a fine tip on your soldering iron and some very fine solder, you know, that's all it takes. But and also a good pair of magnifying glasses, let me tell you, that really helps. The next thing I want to show you uh, is this really small circuit board soldering that I showed in the uh, article. And basically, you can see my finger here, so it gives you an idea of just how small these things are. And basically, what I use these little circuit boards for, these are 1000 ohm resistors here, okay, and uh, those are I use with LEDs in, uh, in the locomotive uh, to drop the current down to a, an acceptable level. Now you can purchase literally small LEDs, and I'll show you one here that's already pre-wired, um, and you can solder these little LEDs to these, and they would fit literally right there and you'd have to solder it on, which very, very difficult. I try not to do that anymore. Uh, but, you know, you can use these 1000 ohm resistors with a standard LED as well. And they're not as large, obviously, as the much larger uh, resistor components that we, uh, we used to use in, in a lot of these installations. So what I typically will do, I, I will use one of these if I'm going to install a full-sized LED in a locomotive for a headlight or something of that nature. And it's fairly easy uh, to do once you're used to working with these things, but they can be a pain in the neck to work with. Okay, let me show you how I do this. Now, before I get started, let me point out that these little circuit boards come from a company called engineering.com, and uh, they call it a resistor LED mounting board, and you get 20 of these in a pack like this. So you just break one off when you need it. And then you can solder um, the small little surface mount resistor, and here's one of them here. So that's a 1000 ohm resistor. Very, very tiny. You can see how big it is compared to my fingernail here. Okay, now the problem is getting it to stay in place. Now the great thing about this is, once you've got these done, okay, then there are two solder points here and here where you can connect wires to go to an LED, uh, for, uh, for the headlights. And then this, you know, you can tuck this out of the way. It's not going to be a big problem putting it somewhere in a locomotive um, model after you've done that. Um, so what I typically do in order to stabilize is I get a, just a touch of super glue on the end of a toothpick. And then I'm gonna put it in place right here between these two metal pads. Okay, now, then I'm going to take this resistor and drop it in place 
right on top of that drop of super glue. And you can see it's already stable. Okay, at any rate, you can see that there's a metal end or a metal exposed on each end of this resistor. And there's also a metal tab here on each one of these, each side of this circuit board. So at this point, all I have to do is just put a drop of solder there. And there, and it's attached. It's probably not something that most of you need to do because these LEDs are now available in these very, very tiny sizes, already attached to a length of wire. And on the end of them, they now, you can get them with a 1000 ohm resistor already. So it's ready to be installed in your locomotive. And I think I showed how to do that in the uh, previous video on the um, uh, the Stuart F3A conversion. Because these things, I, I bought these 20-pack, uh, I believe it was, from a dealer in China. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, under $15, if I remember correctly, for the pack of 20. And that included shipping from China. So they work. They work very well. They're a, uh, a, a daylight type of uh color to them. I like these a lot and um, I probably won't be doing a lot of this soldering job anymore in the future because these are so much easier to use. And they're, to be honest with you, it's less expensive than buying these, I believe. So um, that's all I have for you today. Well, that wraps up another episode. I hope I uh, gave you a little bit more confidence to go forward with soldering. I know a, a lot of you have told me that you still have trouble with soldering. So, you know, it's one of those things that uh, as you practice it and do it, you'll get better at it. So go ahead, get out some scraps and uh, try some soldering. <laughs>